and it couldn't be more perfect and more. Yeah, absolutely. We've got it here in this grand finals. Game two, of course, EG versus Liquid. Here we have it. As There's we go no through the, the five of them, Liquid. There's none of the crazy cosmetics. Slardar doesn't have the crazy one. Batrider doesn't have the C one. No, everyone's going in vanilla today, Ben. Sure is. Apart from Arto, he's got it. He's got the oh, flashy okay. cosmetics. He's got cosmetics to cater for the whole game. Alpine Ursa. Alpine Ursa. Okay. He cosmetics. He's got cosmetic burst on his bat. As mentioned, definitely here. There's, there's going to be made some of the action in the lane, but yeah, we'll see how much they, they put in terms of pressure onto RTZ this time. And uh, we'll see where EG want to take their lanes. At the moment, it looks like EG are wanting to go aggressive down on the bottom lane with their tri lane. I think the Darkseer with the Enchantress might be too much for him because Darkseer always pushes in the lane, which makes it really, really easy for them to dive with the Enchantress. The only problem now is the Oracle's not matched up versus the Darkseer. So Darkseer is going to get a lot. Darkseer versus Bat lane, this is a farm on farm lane, but they they can't do anything about it. And what about the mid lane matchup? Lone Druid versus the Quap. Farm on farm, or farm is there kill farm. potential? Farm on Very farm. little kill potential. Yeah. Savage Roar owns. Oh, bottom lane. Bit of a go here onto GH with the root. Zai punching him down. And, and do you like this decision as well? Why have Liquid uh, taken Miracle to the safe lane and put Matuma mid for this game? Well, what, what is the matchup they're trying to avoid or, the, or they're trying to find? Well, Lone Druid versus Quap. There's not that many laners that match up well versus Quap. I would say Lone Druid is one of the best because your bear is just so tanky and you have a lot of damage. So, like, Quap's kind of forced to do something in the lane because you're generally going to get out CS. And then. The, yeah, this does leave the problem where you have two melee heroes versus an Ursa and a Trin in the bottom lane. I was going to say, it's, it's looking a bit messy there for Miracle, really. You might get a chicken punched kill. Down. Look at the chicken on EG. It's sitting right next to the T3. It's chilling there. They don't want it to die. Enchantress is one of the best heroes at killing it because she has a lot of range and very fast move speed early in the game. On GH in trouble. In fact, there's that range creep blocked him in. Ooh, as yes, he can still get around it. But nonetheless, I mean, as you said, just this double melee lane He's really suffering. At the moment, Zai. Let's see if you get the career, but not quite with the movement speed there. They have brought Kuroki down here, though. So Liquid with the three man now. We'll see if that's going to make things any better down on this bottom lane in this early stage of the game. Actually, forced to re enchant his Mud Golem so that he can have some sort of lane pressure right now. He wasn't able to go for the chicken kill. Didn't get any bounty runes, hasn't secured a safe lane or the mid lane. So Enchantress seems like a liability, at least in the first two minutes of the game. And talking about not getting any bounty runes, there's Zai stealing GHs from right under his nose there in Liquid's jungle. Mid lane at the moment, Samael certainly having a good time. 12 for 5 against the 6 for 2 of Matuma Man. So out laning the lone druid at the moment in this middle lane. Top yeah, lane. he has a double null. Yeah. Versus the Quelling Blade. Uh, Bear actually has more damage if he times both of his pits perfectly, but Samael usually has the edge in the middle lane. Bottom lane. Miracle as well, losing out to RTZ in terms of farm. A lot of pressure being put onto this jug. Has to be careful. On route and a couple of swipes. And certainly hurt. As again, forced back from the wave. Arteezy and Zai keeping full control of this bottom lane. Keep in mind, this, this is not the best thing for EG because they... Uh... Oh, in mid lane. Oh, he, he's going to get the kill in return. At least what GH will be there for it. He tried to save himself with the Savage Draw. At the same time, though, bottom lane is also where the action's happening. Miracle being moved upon, but he does have the salve. But Samael securing that first blood at the least there with that dive and does force a TP rotation from Liquid. And he bought his bottle before. He had enough time to do so. So Samael is fine with that. Samael is very happy with that. One lane, he doesn't have Blade Fury. They're going to make a move on to him again. He drops down the healing ward. It's not going to save him. As the swipes stack up, Crip with the kill secure. As EG doing infinitely better here in this game two laning stage compared to game one. <laughs> Infinitely. Infinitely. I mean, you saw game one, Ben. I did. Just need to last till 17. This is much better as we can see. Top three CSs at the moment, all over on the side of EG. Oh, Quap with a haste rune. Oh, no. It's, it's, um, this mid lane gets scarier and scarier now. 
Yeah, at least he'll be level 5, I think, by the time he attempts for a gank. So the Brute might be able to deal with him at the tower. Got that range creep. Just trying to get a little of a man down low with the Shadow Poison. And in fact, bottom lane, the Kuroki just gets nuked out. They close in, the creeps, they can't help him out. Purifying Flames from Crit. A, uh, a good answer to the early game movements uh, of the, the Enchanter is having that, that reliable nuke. Oh man, Enchantress has actually committed to a stick this early in the game. Good versus Batrider, but she hasn't been in the Batrider's lane at all. Enchantress is suffering a lot. And Samael's Samael going to be so scary this game with this star he's at. Level 6, as she says, still with her haste ring in the bottle. Plays are certainly there for the potential for EG to make. Top lane, mind control. Definitely having the, the lane as what you'd expect, as you mentioned, just trading farm evenly with Universe. Pretty much neck on neck as it comes to the last inning at the moment. GH and mind control. Clearing out some of these jungle stacks as well. So also ensuring that GH gets the levels up. And he himself has been able to be a a little more useful with the rotations, as we've seen early on. Very hard for GH really to find a place to, to find his effect felt. With the early levels on the slot are middle lane. Samel getting rooted. He's got that sound. Uh, sorry, the haste root. And in fact, just turns to harass back the bear. Probably won't look to jump in to kill it. And does have to be careful. GH is sitting around the middle lane. He's been forced to heal with his bear a couple of times already. And Kuro is looking for somewhere to gank with his Enchantress, but he can't find anything. Talking about ganking, Zai has his eyes on the middle lane. Mail a little low on the mana. So he won't have enough for the full combo as such. And looks like Zai doesn't see a good enough opportunity for him to make a move as of yet. Until at least he sees the, the revealing of the rest of Liquid's movements. And bottom lane, they're going to find out pretty shortly. It's Artor. They've got the Troll Trap into the Crush, the Blade Fury as well. It's going to be more than enough to bring down RT's Liquid with the successful rotation, claiming the kill onto the Ursa. Big kill by them. I think Isai was attempting to scout it out, but he actually TP to the top shrine, wrapped around behind mid, dropped the, uh, dropped the ward, and he wasn't anywhere close to the bottom side of the map. I think Tree can nullify a lot of uh, Enchantress's presence in this early game. Although she has one with nature, Freen has the edge. Absolutely. And as you said, just certainly the kind of movements we need to start seeing out from Liquid to, to slow down the, the force that EG is getting together here in these first seven minutes. Mid lane is being eyed, eyed up by GH. They can get a route, could provide the chance for them to come in. In fact, he may just get the crush out what? right. Samir holding back the blink, will still get back, but Kuroki's there, ready and waiting for him with the creeps. They claim themselves the kill. At the same time, though, Miracle was brought down by the combination of Crit and uh, Sir. Him and Arteezy having enough lockdown to, to claim the kill. Mid lane, though, Liquid not stopping the slaughter. They close in on Tazai. Creeps around him. Matumbo, Kroki, and GH move in. And they will claim a second out of this. Finally, Bambi has found her footing, ganking the quad. That was a perfect positioning by Enchantress there. And. You have to wonder whether or not these like EG wards are really doing them any good. Enchantress has not been in the area at all, and that's the main area you're concerned about in this early game. They have one near the T1 on bottom, and then one in between the T1 and T2 in mid. But Enchantress is playing around this bottom bounty rune and uh, rune area, and I don't even need I I don't even think she blew a smoke to catch out Samil. A bit of a, a ooh there from the crowd as Miracle uh, does fail the stack. Back down on the bottom river. GH trying to come in to, to look for the rune, but a lot of control from EG. And then there is Samel with that regen rune in the bottle. Definitely chances for him to make something happen with that. Looks to build up the veil first. Bottom lane, Arteezy getting some pressure on the tower. GH the only one around in the neighborhood at the moment. Soaking up that XP, trying to get himself towards the six. Just have to be careful how close he gets to the bear. And especially with Zai heading down here as well, there could be kill potential here for, for EG if GH isn't careful. If Tree can get his dirty hands on him, but he's way too close to the tower. Or not. They have come a little too far away now. There we have the root is up. He's already used the crush, using the sprint to get himself away. And in fact, the TP will spook EG. They'll back away. Oh. Mind control in with the rotation. Kuroki's there as well. Let's see if you can grab anyone with the vacuum, but it's not going to be the case. Zai already out, as well as the rest of them, away from that tree line. And EG will avoid this rotation from Liquid. Tree might have gotten his move speed nerfed, but. 
Still with Nature's Guy, just way too fast for these Jokers. And instantly as well, RTZ moving up to the top lane, realizing that a Miracle may be a, a little vulnerable now. They do have Lasso, of course, up on Universe. If they can get a Lasso into the overpower Fury swipes off Ursa, definitely a chance for them to bring down the Juggernaut. And a rotation from Samel as well could spell something big for EG. He has that TP now sent out to him. So he's ready with the Sonic Wave to react to any sort of plays that Liquid go for near EGC at once. This is not good for EG though. EG are supposed to be ahead in this part of the game. They have two of their cores are huge lane dominators, Queen of Pain and Ursa, but because of the way that Liquid lanes with the low druid in the mid, Queen of Pain can't really win that lane that hard, even even though Sumail did get first blood, that's pretty unexpected, and he did die in response. Broke, we'll see if he can play his way out of this one. Sumail does have the Sonic Wave, he's holding on to it at the moment. Doesn't seem to want to expend it just for the Enchantress, and Kuroki will be allowed to walk away. Doesn't want to risk it, especially with Kuro holding on to stick charges in the silt. Yeah, he's scared that he might have some, like, ninja creep yeah. there. Also, the Hellbear Smasher does a lot of damage. You don't really want to blink into that. Middle lane. Another wraparound attempt, uh, attempt there from GH. And it uh, just goes for the quick corrosive haze, forcing Samael to, to back up by the looks of it. Regen up that mana and get himself into a better fighting shape to get to another lane. But this is giving more and more space for Matumba. And indeed, as you said, you know, even though Samael has that lead, it's, it's not necessarily a massive one. Matumba still certainly keeping up with the farm on this mid lane on the Lone Druid. And as we can see, you know, EG get, got a little bit of a slight lead very early on, but it's it's evening out, and uh, Liquid with, in fact, the, the edge in experience at the moment. So both teams are about to get a big team fight item. We see the Blink Dagger 300 gold away on the Bat Rider, and then we see the Mech also about 300 gold away on the Darkseer. So things are going to start erupting quite quickly. But Tubman Man probably going to go for a Midas, but I think he's the only guy that's going to go for a farming item this game on Liquid. There's my little GH trying to, to sort of tease the mail away with the crush potential, hiding in the trees, but I believe it was spotted out by Kuroki's neutrals as he moved them across. Crit and Zai now here looking to hold. They want to try and do something with the Sonic Wave. In fact, they just pop it straight up. Does catch Kuroki, but it's not going to be enough to kill him. GH now comes back in with a response, gets the crush, and secures the chance for Kuroki to finish off the Tier 1 with the creeps. Universe comes across a little too late as he doesn't find the chance to find that lasso. And that's going to be Tower down in the middle lane. Sonic Wave used to, to, at the end of the day, getting no kill at all. And that was with EG having four members around the middle lane, and they couldn't stop the push from Liquid. And now Liquid have to be much happier about their Roche uh, contention capabilities. I think they have good scouting with the Enchantress Creeps, who you don't really care about their lives at all. Just throw him in the pit, scout Roche out, and the main thing you have to worry about is this Bat Rider. He just got his Blink Dagger. He was trying to farm in the last fight, and Liquid knew that the timing was around perfect for them. And say if he had that a little earlier, that mid fight could certainly have gone a lot differently. It's really hard to get, get low Druid, though, because if you lasso the Druid, you can recall your bear, and then, or you can just like Savage Roar everyone else. Yeah. You can still Savage Roar while your lasso is, is the point. So it's not the best game for Bat because Juggernaut's also in the game. It was really good in the lightning phase, as we saw. But now Universe has to deliver if EG want to secure Roach. Bottom lane, EG setting up behind Arteezy as he looks to finish off this tier one tower. Ready for any sort of reaction that comes out from Liquid, but that's the time. Stansy, they are just looking for the trade. Pressure's down to the top tier one. Miracle looking for the final touch. He'll claim it. So a simple tier one for tier one trade at the moment. And Liquid, actually, by the looks of it, maybe ready to move in for more. They're eyeing up that tier two on the top lane, seeing if they can poke out a response from Evil Geniuses. This is still beneficial for Liquid. They're getting the better Roche Towers. And that's, I think, what this, this like 10 to 20 minute phase of the game revolves around. And in fact, they found Zai here. Pop down one sentry, Zai. Holds the bat with the overgrowth, but in fact, Miracle jumps straight out of it there with the Omni Slash and the Blade Fury to force Zai away from the tree line and get themselves the kill. I'm surprised Crit didn't cast Fate's Edict on them. I think he maybe didn't have enough range, it looked like, at that fight. Arcane Rune on Queen of Pain. Pretty decent kill rune if they want to take a team fight, but they have no catch 
right now with Bad Rider still farting out neutral camps and the Triant already dead. And the Sally, as you, as you said, could be an issue. The fact that 14 minutes in, even though Samael had a good start in lane, he's only gotten himself involved in one kill. The action just hasn't been high. And uh, as we can see, definitely favoring that of Liquid. Matuma Man now top of the net worth. And Liquid themselves looking to make a play up top. Harteezy, he's got backup coming. Crit is in the neighborhood. He's going to have to do something to help him out. He'll look to try and root my control and hold him back. Harteezy popped in rage, but Liquid, they're ready to fight this. Miracle Surter, Blade Furying as he chases down Crit. Has got the magic immunity there with the Fortune's End. So they won't get the kill immediately. Now Samael looking to respond to this one. Jumps forward. Hasn't quite got the mana for the Sonic Wave. Now he has. As the regen Maroon ticks in, will jump forward again. Has he got the damage to bring these two down? Miracle still being backed up by Mind Control and Kuroki. Samel, he's got to just a bit. Can he actually, he can't, unless he wants to jump in even deeper, but he's got to be scared of what Liquid could have in backup. And Samel Sigh. just doesn't Might find, find the Kuro, chance. Though. Bottom lane as well, Liquid, they're finding the action. Universe will lasso the bear, but the oh, root comes through, fine. GH comes in with a crush, and Universe is brought down. Both unfortunate timing, but AG's teamwork is non-existent right now. The Bat Rider that still has not lassoed a hero, and they need more kills right now. They're losing complete control of the Dire Jungle. Maybe they can get the Skuro kill, though. And they will. With the overpower and the enrage, nothing to hold back the swipes of the bear, so that's something. But still, this is, yeah. I mean, Liquid, the confidence there as well. I think we saw, even on that escape, when Samael was chasing down Miracle, he still pauses to drop an item to get the most out of his stick charges. Maximum efficiency to make sure that Samael doesn't have the burst. The IO shell on uh, the Juggernaut also cancelled his regeneration rune. He would have had enough mana to burst with the veil, but... Look at this up top again, Arteezy getting surrounded here by Liquid. The wall is down, he's troll trapped up. Miracle still has that Omni Slash available. The ult will come through onto Artor. The damage will still tick down. The question is if EG can have the heals to offset the damage that the side Liquid do, and they do. They'll keep Arteezy alive, but now the turnaround comes through. They'll bring down Miracle. Now they'll look for more. The root will be there to hold back Kuroki. The overpower, is it going to be there? It doesn't need it. The slow right clicks fly through as EG. They get the double for Arteezy. Sonic Wave flies through to Mind Control, and they'll find themselves the third. Evil geniuses with the right response to Liquid as they get over aggressive there with the Omni Slash from Miracle, thinking that they can bring down Arteezy, but great control and play from Crit, making sure that the purifying flame heals were to be enough to keep Artor alive and enable him to turn around with the team. They have a really hard time killing people through uh, the False Promise, though. You have to keep in mind they have Leech Seed and the Living Armor on so top of the heals. Purifying Flames. Yeah, there's just incredible amounts of heal coming out. Not to mention Lifesteal from Ursa. He yeah. threw a lot of Fury Swipe stacks onto the Juggernaut, so he also had that extra little bit of heal, which pushed him over the edge, and they, they also didn't get the wall when they were on Ursa, but that wouldn't have made a big difference at all because Ursa's illusions hardly do any damage whatsoever. Very very big fight here for Evil Geniuses, and we will be able to catch the replay here. And indeed, it looked like our talk in a whole world of trouble, but there we have it. As you said, everything, all the heals being sent his way, and that false promise ensuring that the damage to Liquid was done was entirely counteracted by that healing output that Evil Geniuses have. Yeah, they thought they could take a fight with a mech. I, I think it was a pretty good call for them. They just want to create a little bit of space so that Lone Druid can farm. But after conceding one big fight, Arteezy heads straight inside of the Roshan pit. Let's see what Liquid can do about this. It looks like they are aware of this. We'll see if Kuroki does indeed send in the creep to scout it out, and he has. So, so Liquid know what's up. The question is, can they contest it in time? Mind Control's heading over. He does have the wall back and available. Arteezy, for the time being, he's manning up. He's fully committing. He has got the back of his team. In fact, Universe jumps in, but immediately there, the crush and only slash in response. He's brought down. They do finish off the, uh, the Roshan. Arteezy does have the Aegis, but they've lost the bat. Liquid, can they get anything more? Miracle, surge forward with the Blade Fury. Fine side side, holds the bat with the overgrowth, but GH jumps across. He gets the crush. Arteezy response comes in, but there's the free man back your wall. Zai in trouble. The Imbuses fly through, forcing Zai back up the high ground, but they have the shrine. EG will be able to keep his eye alive for the time being. Middle lane, Arteezy getting peeled away from the rest of his team. Samael does have that Arcane Rune. He still has the Sonic Wave. They'll keep Arteezy safe. Top, Zai being kept alive by the Fortune's End. Again, Crit making sure that the tree has the magic community to keep himself alive. And EG, they want to go back in. Samael's got the Blink up. Arteezy as well with his Blink Dagger ready to close the gap. And Matumba's there to make sure that they're held back. Savage Raw to put 
an end to that of EG's. And Evil Genius is getting some serious momentum off that top tier fight and now getting that Roshan and protecting the Aegis. RTZ still has. Yes, and that was a back in wall combo from Darkseer. Uh, I think more importantly than anything, though, Queen of Pain uh, and the rest of EG were able to play very well. Like, he keeps having these runes, too. These arcane runes just make it impossible to catch her without the blink dagger. And that was the blink reveal coming out on Sardar. Uh, that he was able to get that really quick crush on Universe. Universe has not had the impact that I thought he would on this in this mid game. His net worth is starting to fall off. He is the last of the cores. I mean, I guess at the least, Universe sort of sort of did his job there in the sense of kind of jumping into Liquid and, and just keeping them outside of the pit for those last final moments for for RTZ to claim the ages. He did his job. They wanted a clean kill inside the pit. He was and kill whoever he lassoed, but that was not as clean cut as EG would have liked and Oracle was way too far away to save him. And now they still need to keep the pressure on EG. They have recovered, I would say, from the early game after that one big team fight and they have the Roche, but still that's not enough with these mid-game heroes. Yeah, they won a team fight and they're gonna be searching for it. Smoke around as they move in for the high ground. GH there, maybe that's to spell it. Sprinting past them all, jump forward. They found GH, he'll get the last off before the crush and GH brought down the mech, not enough to save him. Again, mind control with the three-man vacuum walls, but the Ursa turns straight towards mind control. The overpower Fury Swipe stacking up and mind control's gone. The Sonic Wave flies through, catches two, but the healing ward is out for Liquid, healing them back up and now Matumba Trying to force them back with the bear. Kuroki with the creep control holds RTZ in place. Being careful how they move in on this one. They know that that bear's still got that Aegis. They're bringing him down, but the heals again from EG, from that overgrowth and such. And the, the living armor holding them back and allowing RTZ to be kept alive. Far superior positioning by EG, claiming the high ground and killing their main initiator before the fight starts. That was the debut of the Radiance coming out from the Lone Druid, but. It was just not enough damage versus mass, massive heal. We're in trouble though. We'll be jumped upon, crushed as well. Crit out, he'll false promise himself. RTZ turning towards Miracle. Miracle still has an Omni Slash. He'll be kept alive. He had to get himself away. Now GH jumps in, finishes off the job onto RTZ and pops that Aegis on the side. Samael will peel Kuroki off. See if Liquid, see the chance to go back in for more. Matuma Man, ready to start. Getting the push on now in this mid lane, he's amounted to a lot of high value here on this Ursa, oh sorry, on this lone druid. I'm talking about the Ursa, just a quick pause. Looks like there's a, a little bit of a lag situation at the moment. Lag. Carle. But this game, well, we made it past the 17 minute mark, Ben. Uh -huh. 21 minutes in. EG Kudos to EG. But the lead with kills, but certainly could go either way. We're, we're about to see how much of a push Liquid can, can get off. And this is, in fact, with a man down. As uh, Atuma Man looking indeed very stacked. Some hail is, of course, still at the top of the net worth. And we're seeing how uh, hard it is for Kuroki and such to play around in these fights with these, these high amounts of burst damage coming through from the Queen of Pain and from. The, the Oracle, and even to, to an extent from RTZ with that overpower fighting through the uh, the passive. Oracle's doing a lot of, uh, he, he's casting his spells very well. Yeah. Like his Fate's Edicts are at the perfect time. His False Promise almost always saves someone, and he almost bursts people down with the Purifying Flame. So, uh, yeah, this fight, they kill GH immediately at the start, and they have the Observer Ward on the high ground, and the low Druid Bear, it's good at like stopping blinks, but that's irrelevant because Universe already uses ultimate. And it's good at whittling people down, but Leech Seed uh, and Purifying Flames is very good at healing up from this sort of bear damage that they have. But they can turn on the turn on the push. Turn it up. Yep, and they've got a good amount of push as well. With Matuma Man's bear chomping away at the tower. Do you have to certainly be wary though of that living armor. They don't get that tower in one push. Zai certainly will be, will be able to get it back up to full health. Looks like that will be the case here as Liquid back off. And Evil Genius is grouped up at the moment. We'll see what their next move is to be. And uh, as quick as they group, looks like they'll split again. Just making sure that they can keep up in terms of farm. Make sure that RTZ remains in a good place. We'll see what he, he does build into. Did have the Desolator queued up earlier. These poor supports. 
they're going to be in for a rough time. Kuro has very low net worth, and he's countered by the Ursa and the Quap. And oh. Liquid, they've scanned this out. They know someone's here. And we'll jump forward straight away on GH. I think they'll be aware it was Zai now. As they don't find anyone else, the ping is coming through. Zai just keeping himself hidden in the tree line. Can they hunt him down? They're going to look for it. In fact, oh, is that a blind crush? That was a blind crush. They, they, they got him, and they got detection to put down for the kill. You see the TP. Oh, okay. Nonetheless, finding him there, hidden in the corner. It's a lot of wasted time. So now the Fusal Blade comes out. This, this makes Oracle's life so much more difficult when he can't face Edict himself. And also, the slow is really important too, but... It's... Miracle's gotten to that point where he can deal with, with the Oracle, and I think they should have enough tools to kite the Ursa. It's still a game of whether or not my control can get a big ultimate off and if EG can counterplay it. On GH here trying to dive behind the tier 2, but Universe will be there with the counter. Will him back with the lasso. RTZ moving on to GH will bring down the slaughter. Crit keeps himself alive with the false promise. RTZ now turning towards Kuro. Zai and Universe getting him around on the sidelines. In fact, though, in the middle of it all, Sumail jumped in, takes a full slash from Miracle. That defusal play was so fast coming out on that Yule Scepter. Oh my goodness. RTZ seeing if he can bring down the bear with the root. They've got a good chance and he'll get it. Plus 300 gold here for Ursa. But they've lost two so far in this attempt to push, but they're still sticking around. Miracle closing back in onto RTZ Matumba, looking for a potential route. The vacuum back into Grogi Stone there with the Centaur. They've caught out RTZ. RTZ down. Zion Universe still hanging around on the sideline, but they're not going to want to jump into that. As Liquid will clean up the tier two. That's a big chorus down. Universe has been very fast on last week's GH. I am very surprised at how quickly he's able to do that. And once they take down GH, it becomes so much harder for Liquid to find. I'm surprised they stuck around, but with some excellent coordination, they were able to chain the vacuum into the Centaur Sun to actually have some sort of secondary initiation. That's what caught EG off guard. Also, the Diffusal Blade killing Sumail early on in the fight. Dagger. Now for mind control. Mid lane. Timber. See if you could get that cheeky first hit root. Oh, and can you test. guess the only hero with no deaths in this game? The only hero that I haven't seen die. I want to say. Oh, Ben, that's a hard question. You don't have the scoreboard in front of you. No I don't cheating. Have the, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. It. Is it mind control? Nope. No. Is that? Nope. No. Nope. It's crit. It's crit. I don't know how Crit has no deaths on Oracle. I was going to say, to be fair, he has false promised himself a few times. Yep. But he still hasn't died. For sure, yeah. Give him credit. <laughs> Give the man credit. He just has arcane boots and earned, and he's still not dying to this lineup. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> I don't know what the Russian ones mean, do you? Apparently that one means it's a, it's a GG. It's GG. Yeah. I know some of the Chinese ones. What was that Chinese one? Uh, Sunstrike. Sunstrike. There we have it. International memes. They, they just yell a lot. Like, Sunstrike! Sunstrike! <laughs> That's kind of why I do that. <laughs> you have more finesse than that. Don't shoot yourself down. Top lane Liquid claim another tier 2. But EG not looking to to perform any sort of a defense out, outside of the map up there. Add more creeps to the mix. Hell bear on bear on bear. All the bears. So Rosha number two coming up very soon. Liquid played incredibly well from the 20 minute phase to the 26 minute phase. That was the time where I thought EG would be able to get a, a good grip on this game, committing with the Aegis, but maybe some sort of lag coming out that caused him to lose his first Aegis is gonna be yeah. This could be huge though, look at this, they found Miracle with the lasso, and they got the damage to bring down the Sonic Waves there, Miracle be careful of no, finally falls, great way for EG to start the fight, and they're not done, RTZ blinks in, finds a second on the sideline, Purifying Flames burst down a third, Hello, EG finally for what a fight for them there, as instantly Universe ready to react to the fact that GH blinked in and crushed the creeps to look to farm them, and the fact that at the same time Ben, Roshan's up, so not only an incredibly good team fight, a Roche, an Aegis, and a Cheese, two evil geniuses, and Liquid. 
that this is the trade-off for Crit playing very well in the early game. They're like, this Oracle is a very, very big problem. And because of that, Juggernaut has to commit to a defusal first. He he could have lived if he had the uh if he had the mantle. If there. he had the man yeah, absolutely. But the Orchid came out perfectly onto Miracle and he, he has he has a lot of HP. He has 1440 HP, but yeah. still ends up dying to this amount of burst. Look at this. I think definitely GH will be kicking himself for not still having a Blink Crush available to, to react to Miracle being Lasso. Yeah, he, he cannot yeah. show himself. No. I, I, they do have the, uh, the Darkseer vacuum wall, but without the Slaughter Blink, it's there's, underwhelming. Where's the follow-up? Yeah. yeah. There's no no sort of AoE control, unless, unless there's a creep. Yep. But that takes, that takes a lot of foresight. I'm trying to beat Oracle in the Foresight game, it's not going to happen. Especially uh, when you're trying to do it against an Oracle. He sees Such is great. Let's see what they can do here, Liquid. We'll respond to this. They'll get the deny. But EG really solidifying their, their grip here in game two. Much. Ooh, an solid. early gem. That's exciting. Did you don't you see like that it? very often anymore. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I think uh, this is the right game to do. Uh, it's it's weird because they don't have any any uh, invis heroes on their side, but they know that this is the time. This mid game is supposed to be EG's greatest strength. They didn't have a good early game, and they've been playing very well in the mid game comeback. But they still need a little bit more, and they need to shut down any sort of map control that they get from Liquid. They need to make sure that this Enchantress has nowhere to farm. You will want her to just die to like four hits from the Ursa into the later game. He's going for Dezo, so that's definitely a possibility pretty soon. And it's at the same time, it's a little bit risky. If you lose a gem, this tree is gonna get destroyed. But at the same time, if you keep it, this tree can have a huge game because they won't be able to see him unless they buy tons and tons of dust. So cheese up on Queen of Pain. So Matt, he's gotta be careful with this. The sentry has just been placed up on the cliff. So he really does not want to make a move up on it unless there's. He has the backup necessarily. He does have Universe coming in with the grab onto Kuro. GGH with the response. Gets the two man crush. Kuro gets bursted down. The Sonic Wave's there. Now looking to jump forward for more. There'll be the surge to try and get GH back to safety. But Samael holding him back with the Yule Scepter and following him for, through as well. There's going to be no stopping here from EG as they look for more. Is there anything that Liquid can do to hold them back? And it doesn't look like it. They've got to sack GH, leave him alone. Zai comes through with a punch. And EG again finding a second pick off. With Liquid not able to respond. They can't deal with this Queen of Pain now. Queen of Pain has recovered immaculately from the early game. Now top of the net worth. Uh, even despite dying three times. I mean, this is, we'll keep, yeah, this is insane. The fact that Samael is keeping up with a Midas Radiance Lone Druid and a, and a Midas Radiance Matumba Man Lone Druid of all things. Yeah, I don't know how they will to keep up this amount of farm. The, the Roach Gold certainly helps a little bit. And playing around with the cheese right now, he can have that extra layer of aggression that was not possible before. And he has the False Promise behind him and Living Armor. So all these tools are going to play into Sumail dialing up. And he's nearly got the Sheeta's Guard complete. Uh, this is going to be absolutely massive in these fights. For, but again, just something else to keep him alive, even if he gets Blink Crushed. And also to provide that slow to allow Arteezy to, to commit on targets and chase them down. He's going for a Scepter now onto the Ursa. Scepter is good for multiple reasons. It increases your burst a lot because you can use your ult a lot more frequently. And secondly, it prevents you from buying. It, it helps you not buy PKB, which you yes. don't really want to do on Ursa. No, I, definitely a game like this. It's, it's got so many more benefits. I mean, what, what are you worried about being crushed? Now you've got the ability to get out of it. Silences. I mean, no one's really going to be building any silences this game on Liquid, and they don't have any with their spells itself. So, yeah, Axus are definitely the way for our tour to go. You can also like take off the Corrosive Haze very early on in the fight. I think he could just commit it at the start of the fight, though, to burst someone down. I think that might be more important to get a kill in combination with the Lasso and have it up. I think the cooldown reduction may be a bigger play here than being able to cast it through a stun. Ah, this they, the they want to bring it down. They've got the DD on Samael. Is it going to be quiet enough? Doesn't look like it is. With Soulburn, not enough to bring it down. So Matumba will keep Alfredo alive. Where the Shiva's at? There it is. Uh, well, in terms of committing it for that kill, maybe. Maybe he could have done it. That's for sure. Maybe he's still a little scared of how Liquid would react, because as it is, Liquid do have their full lineup on the high ground, so EG just a little worried about potentially being jumped upon, and they themselves are to smoke up, sweep the map, see if they can catch any of Liquid out of there. But Liquid playing very reserved now. It's clear that they are much more scared now of Evil Geniuses after the way the last few fights have gone.
They do now have a, you know, they've got the gem themselves out on Lone Druid. That's a bit more reasonable because they do, they are against the Trium Protector, but now they've awarded most of the wards, so that's why you see Liquid playing in this held back position behind their T2s. And now they have to worry about the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain's yeah. an additional layer of chaos that Liquid don't want to deal with. You blink in with Shiva's, and you're very unlikely going to die. Like, he has Yules to save himself, he has a ton of armor, and he has a cheese to fall back on just in case. And that's a problem because normally you're waiting for the bad right or last. That was too, that was close there, Samael. He blinks at the same time at GH. It looks like he may still get taken out. No, the false promise comes through. Samael's going to be kept alive. And now in the overgrowth, EG, the other one's ready to chase down. The wall will be dropped. But Arteezy straight into the front lines, looking to commit on the target. Will be held back by the slow card. Actually chased out Kuroki. He him back towards the middle. Miracle will be nuked down. Arteezy still alive for the time being. A crit coming in just in time with the save. Keeps the bear alive. Mind Control trying to chase him down, but he doesn't have the damage. Arteezy survives. Liquid, they've lost two. They've lost three. Samael going absolutely... He will make it. Will he take out in base? It's going to be close. No, he should be fine. Kuro's there as well. Using his extra heals were required, but what a fight for EG. And just that starting there, both Samael and GH blinking past each other. Samael's taking a life, and again, you've got to give a shout out to Crit. This man, false promise onto Samael. The fortunes in and such onto Arteezy, making sure that Liquid can't finish him off with the magic damage. The control's been perfect from this Oracle in these team fights. I like the synergy in between the Enrage and the Purifying Flames, too, because it's pretty much a free heal without you actually having to commit the Fates Edict. So yep. Ursa can still attack. But yeah, Crit. I would say definitely the MVP this game. He is amount of saves with this little net worth is a sight to behold. And he still hasn't died. Seven zero six. Yeah. And look how much money he's got. He can buy what he wants. He will go for the mech. What a selfless Picks it up guy. pretty much full up. Ooh. 22 to 9, 34 minutes in. 11k gold lead now for the evil geniuses to clean up the shrines on the side. Samael closing in on that Bloodthorn. Now there's no one for them to jump. They, they need to do like a double jump. Like you jump in with a slaughter once you see the Oracle, then you vacuum wall so they can get a kill on him. But Oracle has just been very far behind uh, in these fights, just hiding in the fog. And also the cores from EG have been aggressive to the point where Liquid cannot ignore them. Oh, look at this, Liquid there. They're going to go for the smoke here. Let's see if they can get the jump on the fine crit. He's going to be forced away. Overgrowth there as well. Crit. He's going to be kept alive. And again, he gets off the false promise. Can they get him away? In fact, with the Yules there to hold back Miracle, it looks like Crit. He may just survive this one. He's healing up. He's going to be fine. False promise ends. He still survives. And it's Liquid. They've lost Karoki. Samael jumping forward with the Sonic Wave. Shiva's guard finds Matuma Man as he looks to try and hide in the tree line. Look for the TP. Apple Samael jumps forward. Has the Yules. TP is cancelled. Matuma Man is taken down. EG again, and you just can't kill this Oracle! Wow, I did not foresee first phase Oracle being this useful in this game. The, the amount of saves is ungodly for my grace. Whether it's saving himself, saving his teammates. Nice four staff from, I believe, Universe uh, to set that False Promise up. Yeah. He almost died before he was able to False Promise. That smart R stun duration nerf. <laughs> And here we have it, EG taking their second melee racks. Bottom lane, range racks to fall as well for Liquid. And I mean, what do you do if you look, as you said, you, you've got to look to jump in onto two, but as we're seeing there, even if you jump in onto crit, you don't win the team fight. Well, they have to kill him. <laughs> I mean, I, that's, that's step one, kill him in the jump. If you don't kill him in the jump, you lose the fight. Yeah, it uh, really seems to be the case. Because they committed vacuum, uh, uh, vacuum for that. If you don't commit vacuum, it's not that big a deal. But that was, you still have to commend that play from Liquid though. Dropping the ward at the ancient spot to get vision of the high ground, fighting at the opponent's shrine is a very bold move. And look at it, they love to do something to try and stop EG getting the third Roshan at this game. But it's going to be so hard. Blink back from Samael. Arteezy committing with the Enrage to the Roche. He is going to be able to find it. Picks up the Aegis. GH will jump forward. Looks for some sort of a steal, but he's not going to get it. Universe quick with the lasso. Holds back the Slada. And now it's Liquid trying to get on the retreat. But the silence there onto Mike Joe will be purged off by the Grease. High ground Miracle trying to get himself away with the Blade Fury. Samael, though, he finishes off the second kill. Gets Kuroki. And now he's closing in for more Miracle on the high ground trying to retreat but Arteezy's in there with the bash and they find the third. 
EG walking away with game two. I mean, game one may have been a very quick victory for Liquid, but EG making sure that this one, 37 minutes, is a little slower and a lot more painful. Time to spin those Russian chat wheel commands. It's over for Liquid here. They have a little bit of fight left, but this fight around the Roche that they committed, like the the big item spike from the Orchid that led to the miracle kill. Here they go. Side, falling low, trying to get himself out, but again, Chris there with the save. They'll drop it down. The false promise he's going to be kept alive. RTZ will be rooted. Does, of course, have that Aegis to rely on. On the side, though, they've lost Kuroki again. RTZ again still survives the face eating fortune and from Crick, keeping him alive. He heads back to the tier four. The quid wow. they're down three. They don't have buyback. No one died on EG. I mean, this is insane. What? I don't know how Oracle kept two people alive there. And there we go. On to the base, and they'll tap out. They know it's over. And what a game for EG. It's It's got to feel so good for them coming back after a game one as dominant as it was for Liquid, and then giving us that tight-knit performance as a team. And as you said, it crit, crit. with the Oracle oh. plays. It was... It was phenomenal to watch. Uh, they also were really good about the time today.